Hey everybody, welcome back to the next episode in my Helix in the Studio series. I haven't done a video in this in a while, but I did want to talk about another topic that I've been asked questions about quite a bit. Earlier in this series, I spoke a lot about using the Line 6 Helix or Helix LT as an audio interface. And I believe it truly makes a really wonderful audio interface that can almost be the center of a really nice home project studio uh, without need for any other external outboard interfaces. Having said that, some folks are already set up with an audio interface that they are very happy with. It's already maybe the center of their studio. And they would prefer to integrate the Helix with that existing audio interface. And I get a lot of questions about how this can be done and the best way to approach this. So today we're going to take a look at just that. So before I talk about that, a little bit about my setup. For the longest time, people who've watched my videos uh, probably knew that I always did have some form of other outboard audio interface. I actually need multiple interfaces for some of the video shoots that I do, just for some of maybe the more complex routing I need to do for certain situations while producing videos. I was using for the longest time an IK Multimedia Axe IO, which I still believe is a wonderful audio interface. My only issue with it was that for the size of my studio, and as I've expanded, it didn't have enough inputs and outputs. So just a few days ago, I upgraded to a Focusrite Claret Plus 4 Pre. It just seemed to have the right number of inputs and outputs. It has ADAT optical inputs and outputs. It has SPDIF digital inputs and outputs, four mic preamps, another four line inputs, four line outputs, it's really easy to integrate everything I need in my studio in with it. I'll, over here, I have some outboard rack gear, a couple nice mic preamps and compressors, which you're hearing me record through right now with the uh, Shure SM7B mic I have. So I have dedicated line inputs for that. But the issue was then, how do I integrate the Helix in the best way with this? Previous to this, what I was doing is when I used my Line 6 Helix as an audio interface, I would have my other outboard audio interface and the Line 6 Helix both going into a Mackie big knob, which is just off screen over here by my right hand. And what I did is I had my studio monitors being fed from the Mackie big knob and the inputs of the Mackie big knob being fed from one audio interface, which was the Axe IO, but now is the Claret Plus and the Line 6 Helix. So I could just press a button and have my Helix being routed to my monitors. And with the press of another button, I could have my other audio interface being fed to them. So that actually made it a lot easier to be able to switch effortlessly between it. Once I switched in my DAW to whichever audio interface I wanted to use, I would press a button and I would have a master volume control here that I could use. So really wonderful. And I still have it set up like that. But for now, I have found it a lot easier to just integrate the Helix in with the Claret plus audio interface. And that's going to cover probably 90% of the situations I need to cover, whether doing session work, composing, shooting videos and whatnot. Now that doesn't mean I'll never use the Helix as an audio interface anymore. It's a wonderful audio interface. And in fact, if I was just maybe doing some tone creation or working with certain Helix functions, I may just still use that in particular situations. But I wanted something where I didn't have to do so much juggling back and forth in my dawn, constantly switching between interfaces. So you might ask then, how am I going to integrate the Helix in with the Claret? Well, the Claret has one really nice feature that I mentioned already, and that is the digital SPDIF inputs. And as many of us Helix owners know, the Helix has a digital SPDIF output as well. So the advantage of using that digital output is that you would not be going through extra digital to analog and analog to digital conversions in the process of recording your Helix. So there's basically two ways to set this up. We could take two analog quarter inch patch cables, plug them into, let's say the quarter inch outputs of the Helix and plug those into two of the quarter inch line inputs on our Claret or whatever audio interface you're using, and then set those quarter inch outputs to line output in the global settings of the Helix. You could take the XLR outs and set those to microphone level and put those into two mic preamps on your audio interface of choice if you have two mic preamps which you can use. But with both of those situations, we are going from a digital to an analog conversion from the Helix and then hitting our audio interface, we're gonna go from an analog to digital conversion. So theoretically, there would be a loss in quality. Now, having said that, in the days of modern 
audio converters, even some fairly low priced audio interfaces on the market have excellent analog to digital and digital to analog conversion when comparing them back to the days when the whole digital audio thing just started. So, and I'm going to give you an audio example in a moment comparing the digital inputs versus the analog inputs. And we'll do a little bit of a blind test, but I won't make you wait for the results. We will just reveal them here in this video, but just so people can hear, is it something to worry about if you don't have the ability to use the digital inputs? Is it going to degrade the quality of the audio that much? And I think some people might be surprised at the results on this. So we'll do that in just a moment. So obviously we would want to use the digital out of the Helix into a digital input on another audio interface, if at all possible. Uh, if you have an audio interface that has an SP diff input and you get the right cable, a cable that I ordered and had shipped overnight from Amazon, and I was up and running in seconds with this, uh, we would want to use that. But if we did not have a digital input on our audio interface, then we would have to go just the analog cable route. Let's say that I do have, in, as in my case, the SPDIF digital input on my audio interface. Well, there are going to be a couple settings we're going to have to make sure are set correctly inside of our Helix. I have a video talking about uh, kind of an overview of all of the global settings in the Helix, and I will put that down below a link to it because it covers the settings you would have to make. Essentially, you would have to choose the digital output as being the SP diff on the Helix, and that should be done in the global settings, as I mentioned. And you would want to make sure that the sample rate that the Helix is set at is going to match the sample rate that you are working on in your audio interface. So I'm working at 48 kilohertz. I have the Helix set at that. I have my DAW set at that. And everything just synced up beautifully and worked as it is supposed to. So let's go over to Cubase and see exactly how I got that all set up. So here we are over in Cubase and you'll see I have a project going and I'm recording my voiceover down here. This is all going through the Claret. Actually, I'm going through on the voiceover into a uh, warm audio WA273 mic pre and EQ and one of their WA76 limiting amplifiers. Really beautiful stuff from my good friends over at Warm Audio. And then you'll notice I have a couple other tracks. I have guitar and I have guitar DI. And you might be wondering why I have guitar hard DI, but we're going to talk about that in a moment. So if I just simply come over here and hit my F4 key, what you will notice happens is I have my audio inputs set up. So my stereo input, which is actually feeding this guitar track up here at the top, is set to SP diff 1 and 2. So the SP diff input is going to actually be a stereo input. So the SP diff 1 would represent, in this case, the left side of the signal, and SP diff 2 would be the right side. And I have that recording onto a stereo track right here. Now, the mono input here, input 5, is the line input that I have going into the Focusrite Claret, which is taking the voiceover. So that's this voiceover channel down here, and that's feeding out of the warm audio gear I mentioned already. Now, you might say the Guitar DI, what exactly is that? Well, one thing that I really like about using the Helix as an audio interface is that ability to capture our direct unprocessed signal on our USB 7 just by default. So what I would always do when recording guitar is I would have my guitar track set up with the process sound coming out of the signal, but I would always add a second track, set it to USB 7 and grab just the raw dry guitar tone. So that if I ever needed to maybe change the tone or tweak the tone, I wouldn't have to go and re-record everything just to have a different tone. I could slap an instance of Helix Native on that track and tweak, or I could just reamp that through any rig that I wanted. So it's always a great kind of fail safe. Sometimes I never use it, but it's always nice to have. But if we aren't using the Helix as an audio interface, we might say, well, how can we now capture that? So I'm plugged with my guitar into the Helix input. Now, what I did do though, I'm just gonna pull up HX Edit here. Here is the a preset I'm playing through, which is my Dumblish uh, Helix preset that's available on the Line 6 part marketplace, a real favorite uh, preset of mine. If you'll notice though, um, one thing that I have added in here that's not included on the actual presets you get from the marketplace is a send block on send one. I've run a cable, a quarter inch cable from the send one on my Helix to the instrument input number one on my Focusrite Claret audio interface. And I've gone into the global settings on the Helix and set send one to send an instrument level signal out. 
Having done that now, what you will notice is over here, I've set this mono input to input one. So now when I play, you're going to notice my voice is being recorded here. I'm going to get my processed helix signal up here going through the Dumblish preset. And down here, I will get a naked raw guitar track. <laughs> So as you can see there, I can have both now. So if I needed to reamp this at a later date, I still have my guitar DI. So one problem somebody might point out to that is they say, yeah, great, you're recording you know, this digital output of the Helix up here on this track. So we're not getting these extra you know, digital to analog, analog to digital conversions. So we are getting the most pristine audio possible, which is good. But down here on the guitar DI, we aren't. We're having to now go through a digital to analog conversion coming out of the Helix and then another analog to digital conversion going back into the Claret. That's a very valid point. How much of a difference that is going to make is going to be up to our own personal opinion. Um, so having said that, what is the difference when dealing with a decent audio interface with decent conversion and dealing with the digital to analog converters coming out of the Helix? What's the difference in sound or tone between just sending it straight through the digital outputs to the digital inputs or going through those extra conversions? Well, I have a little loop that I set up and I recorded this loop one pass through the digital outputs on the Helix to the digital inputs on the Focusrite Claret. And then I did the same performance, same looped little riff, and I recorded them coming out of the analog outputs of the Helix to the analog in line inputs on the Claret. And I'm gonna play you those a couple times here. I'm gonna play them for you first, just labeled as tone A and tone B. So you don't create any sort of bias. Give those a listen, and then I'll come back and then I will warn you before I play them with revealing which audio part is which, and then you can listen to them again. So here they are. We're going to have tone A and tone B. One of these tones has been recorded through the digital output of the Helix to the digital input of the Claret Plus, and one is from the analog quarter-inch outputs of the Helix to the line inputs on the Claret. Okay, what did you think? I have those tone matched to within 0.1 dB, so there shouldn't be any discrepancy in volume throwing you off. Um, very close, uh, enough to matter. Well, I guess that's gonna be up to every listener and their ears and ability to pick out maybe extremely fine details, but I find that they're exceptionally close and probably not gonna be a deal breaker either way. I will play them again now and you can see which is which. Right. Any surprises? I don't know. I mean, this wasn't about seeing exactly who could pick out uh, which was which, but it was just more to show you that maybe if you have to use the analog outs because we don't have a digital input on our interface is really not 
the big deal breaker that we think it might be. Now, if you are actually using the analog outs, we still could use this little trick of a send block if we have the room in our preset to send out to a separate input on our audio interface if need be. I mean, it dep really depends on the audio interface you have and how many inputs it's going to have. If you want to record your Helix preset in stereo, you're going to need two, and then you'll need a third instrument input to do this little trick of recording your DI guitar. Now, something else we want to watch for, most audio interfaces are going to come with some sort of a control panel. So with the Focusrite one, we have this here, Focusrite Control. Now, if you notice over here in Cubase, I don't have any of the monitor buttons selected because I don't really want to hear this coming back to me processed from the DAW. Um, what I have done, if you notice when I play here, and we'll take a look at Focusrite Control. When I play guitar, I'm getting signal on analog one, and I'm getting signal over here on SP diff one two. Now I can add whatever inputs I need over here and any outputs I need using uh, this focus right control. But I, if I don't need these, I see I could actually get rid of analog two because I'm not using it right now. I could also get rid of analog six. I'm not using it. I could also get rid of analog seven. All I'm really using right now is my analog one, which is my guitar DI. <laughs> You'll notice it's a much lower signal to the SP diff, which is my processed helix signal. Much higher level of input. And then my voice, as you see, as I'm talking, this little meter is bouncing up and down and recording over here on the voiceover track. So you might ask, well, why do you have the SP diff digital input with this volume level up? And why do you have the guitar DI down? Well, I'm using something that's basically called direct monitoring. I'm monitoring the signal before it goes to the DAW so that there's no latency. If I was to turn these monitor buttons on, and you wouldn't hear any difference with the way this is being recorded, but I would hear over my speakers, I would get both the guitar DI coming from the Helix through the, the direct monitoring, and I would also be hearing it monitoring through the Helix, and there would be a bit of a delay, and it's very unpleasant. It kind of sounds like you're playing with a really short delay on, depending on your latency settings in your DAW. Now, by using direct monitoring, I can have my buffer settings much higher so that I don't have to stress my CPU as much and just monitor directly. Now, if you notice also my voiceover track is pulled down, I don't want to hear my voice coming back through. So if I was to turn this up, I would now hear this being processed before the DAW and it would be coming out of my monitors, like my Helixes, which I want to hear. So I've turned down my guitar DI because I don't want to hear it, but it's still being recorded just because I turned this down. This is just sort of a, a mix we can give for what's coming out of our monitors from the direct monitoring, uh, but it does not affect what's actually recorded to tape or onto the hard drive. So that's really good. So I, I have my guitar DI turned down here because I don't want to hear it. I have my voiceover turned down because I can hear myself talking clearly. And I have my SP diff up. And the neat thing is if I was playing to a backing track and maybe my guitar was too loud, I could come over here and bring this down. <laughs> And now here in my monitors, the volume of that has gone down or vice versa. I could, you know, crank it up more so I get more volume. I can also pan it, which is not something you guys are going to hear the difference from. And then if we double click this, it just goes back to its zero settings. So really useful stuff. And obviously, depending on the audio interface that you use, it's, going to look different than this, but a lot of them have similar abilities built into them. Well, I hope that was helpful, and I hope that that answers some of the questions that I get a lot for folks who want to integrate their Helix into their studio, but without using it as the audio interface or the brains. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please like the video, share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of watching it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content. I'll be back soon with some more. Thank you guys so, so much for tuning in. Ciao for now.